Hello everyone, this is the most important guideline of revision for your MRCOG part two exam. I could not emphasize this enough. I remember there were so many questions just purely from this guideline. So you have to nail this guideline. Now I remember when I was trying to read for my exams and I'd every time I'd open this guideline, I just would fall asleep because it's the most boring guideline to read. Um, so that's why I've done a summary for you, a summary presentation of all the important key points that you need to know from that guideline so you can look through this and learn the salient points without having to fall asleep. So this is the diabetes and pregnancy guideline. It talks about management from preconception to the postnatal period. Let's get started. Preconception, so good control reduces the risk of miscarriage, congenital malformation, stillbirth and neonatal death. If a woman's got diabetes and a BMI of over 27, you want to offer advice to lose weight before they uh, become pregnant. You also want to advise patients to start folic acid 5 milligrams a day um, until 12 weeks of gestation to reduce um, risk of neural tube defects. So start as soon as there's planning a pregnancy until 12 weeks of gestation. And that's 5 milligrams a day, a day not the 400 micrograms uh, that's routinely recommended for everybody else. Target blood glucose levels and HbA1c levels before pregnancy. So type 1 diabetes, fasting blood glucose levels should be uh, 5 millimoles per litre to 7 millimoles per litre on waking up and uh, plasma glucose levels um, of 4 to 7 before meals. HbA1c level of less than 48 or 6.5% is your preconception target. Offer retinal assessment at first appointment unless retinal assessment has been carried out in the last six months. Refer to a nephrologist, so this is for renal stuff, if serum creatinine is 120 micromoles per litre or more, or urinary albumin creatinine ratio is over 30 milligrams per millimole, or EGFR is less than 45 mils per minute. Risk factors at booking appointments, so you want to be screening for these uh, um, in for every patient who uh, books with their pregnancy. So BMI of over 30, previous macrosomic baby, weighing 4.5 kgs or more, previous gestational diabetes, family history of diabetes, um, as in having a first degree relative with diabetes, and ethnicity with a high prevalence of diabetes. So glycosuria detected by routine antenatal screening. So if there is glycosuria of two plus or above on one occasion or glycosuria of one plus or above on two occasions on two or more occasions, then you want to refer these patients on to um, having a um, diabetes check in the pregnancy. So testing is recommended for anybody who has had previous gestational diabetes. Now they should be tested um, so either so early self-monitoring of blood glucose can be is recommended or um, oral glucose tolerance test should be done as soon as possible after booking. And this could be in the first or the second trimester. And a further GTT should be done at 24 to 28 weeks if the results of the first GTT are normal. Anybody who's got risk factors that we talked about, like BMI over 30 or a family history of diabetes, um, or we talked about macro, previous macroscopic baby of more than 4.5 kg or more. So any of those risk factors that we talked about, um, then you want to be offering them a GTT at 24 to 28 weeks as well. Or anybody who has got that antenatal glycosuria that we talked about on the last slide should also be offered um, a glucose testing. And that might be uh, with GTT if they are still within the 24 to 28 week mark um, or um, some, you know, based on your trust guidance, um, you decide as to where you, you know, what sort of testing they will need if they are fur much further on in the pregnancy. So diagnosis of gestational diabetes is either so these words are really really important so these either or and um you know for, for these glucose monitoring testing because i remember there was uh, there was uh, questions in the exam where they had tweaked this um and and or 
um, between the, 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 you know, the, the, the measurements and had said to then choose the right answer. So very, very important to pay attention to this slide. So gestational diabetes is uh, so either a fasting blood glucose level of 5.6 millimoles per litre or above, or to a two hour plasma glucose level of 7.8 millimoles per litre or above. So if they have either of these, um, then they have diabetes basically diagnosed. So gestational diabetes, so fasting plasma glucose levels below seven, offer them a trial of diet and exercise changes. Um, fasting plasma glucose of seven or above, uh, immediate treatment with insulin, with or without metformin, and diet and exercise changes. Fasting plasma glucose level of between 6 and 6.9 with complications like macrosomia or polyhydramnias, consider immediate treatment with insulin with or without metformin and lifestyle and dietary changes. So everybody gets lifestyle and dietary changes and um, exercise changes. Exercise as recommended is at least 30 minutes of walking after every meal. Um, but it's it's then it's then, you know, deciding when they start the treatment and the treatment is only if they are so they're just below seven, then you want to advise diet and exercise changes and then re, and then review them again in one to two weeks and decide if they need any oral treatment. So testing that's recommended for type one diabetics is fasting, pre-meal, one hour post-meal and bedtime, um, blood glucose levels daily. Um, the same is recommended for type two diabetics and GDMs who are actually on multiple daily insulin injections. They should also be testing fasting, pre-meal, one hour post-meal and bedtime, again, daily. Type two diabetics and, and, and gestational diabetics who are just on diet and exercise changes or just taking oral therapy like metformin or are on single dose intermediate or long acting insulin, then they just need testing fasting and one hour post-meal only daily obviously so target blood glucose levels fasting 5.3 millimoles per liter and one hour after meal 7.8 or two hours after meal 6.4 millimoles per liter again very very important and and or pay attention on the and and the or retinal assessment during pregnancy so pre if they have pre-existing diabetes then they should have a uh, clinic then they should have a retinal assessment done at first antenatal clinic appointment um, and it should be done, uh, offer a retinal assessment by digital imaging with, uh, with you know, mitrices, which is opening of the, of the, uh, of the pupils um, using uh, tropic amide, um, unless they've had retinal assessment in the last three months. If they have a uh, diabetic retinopathy, offer additional retinal assessment at 16 to 20 weeks, offer another retinal assessment at 28 weeks. Diabetic retinopathy is not a contraindication to vaginal birth. Diabetic retinopathy should not be considered a contraindication to rapid optimization of blood glucose control in women who present with a high HbA1c in early pregnancy. Renal assessment during pregnancy, arrange a renal assessment at first contact during the pregnancy for women with pre-existing diabetes if they have not had one in the last three months. Consider referring pregnant um, pay women with diabetes to a nephrologist if the serum creatinine is 120 micromole per litre or more, urine albumin creatinine ratio is greater than 30 milligrams per mole per millimoles, or their uh, or total protein excretion exceeds 0.5 grams a day, um, do not use EGFR to measure kidney function in pregnant women. Consider thromboprophylaxis for pregnant women with a nephrotic range proteinuria above 5 grams a day or albumin creatinine ratio greater than 220 milligrams per millimoles. Ultrasound monitoring of fetal growth and amniotic fluid volume is recommended every four weeks from 28 um, weeks to, th to 36 weeks. Timing and mode of birth. Type 1 or type 2 diabetes and no complication and elective birth by induced labour um, or if indicated cesarean section is recommended between 37 and 38 plus 6 um, weeks of pregnancy. So that's type 1 or type 2 with no complications, um, you know, need either induction of labour or um, cesarean section if, if required between 37 and 38 plus 6. 
Elective birth before 37 weeks for type 1 or type 2 diabetes who have metabolic or other maternal or fetal complications. So that's elective birth before 37 weeks um, for type 1 and type 2 with complications. Gestational diabetes um, who, um, again, have no complications. Um, so gestational diabetes should give birth no later than 40 plus 6. Offer elective birth by induced labour or by cesarean section. Um, consider elective birth before 40 plus 6 with gestational diabetes who have maternal or fetal complications. If general anaesthetic anesthesia is used, then monitor blood glucose every 30 minutes from induction of it, general anaesthetic uh, until after baby is born and the woman is fully conscious. Blood glucose monitoring, monitoring during labour and birth. So monitor capillary blood glucose every hour during labour and birth for women with diabetes and maintain it between 4 and 7 millimoles per litre. Intravenous dextro dextrose and insulin infusion from, should be used from established labour you know, when, when the woman is in established labour for women with type 1 diabetes. Use intravenous dextrose and insulin infusion during labour and birth for women with diabetes whose capillary blood glucose is not maintained between 4 and 7. Neonatal care. Um, women with diabetes should be uh, advised to uh, birth in a hospital setting where there is uh, advanced neonatal resuscitation available 24 hours a day. Um, babies of women with diabetes should stay with their mothers unless obviously there's a complication and they need to be admitted to the unit. Blood glucose monitoring should be done uh, routinely at two to four hours after birth in babies of women with diabetes. Um, carry out extra blood glucose testing um, if the if the baby is showing any clinical signs of polycythemia, hyperbilirubinemia, hypercalcemia or hypermagnesemia. Perform an echo on babies of uh, women of the women diabetes if they show any clinical signs associated with congenital heart disease or cardiomyopathy, including heart murmur. Do not transfer babies of women with diabetes to community care until they are at least 24 hours old and are maintaining blood glucose levels and are feeding well. So they should stay in hospital for at least 24 hours um, until they are that they can they are they can satisfy us that they are maintaining their blood glucose levels and are feeding well. Admit babies of women with diabetes to the neonatal unit if they have hypoglycemia associated with any abnormal clinical signs, respiratory distress, signs of cardiac decompensation from congenital heart disease or cardiomyopathy, signs of neonatal uh, encephalopathy, signs of polycythemia and are likely to need partial exchange transfusion, need for intravenous fluids, need for tube feeding, jaundice requiring intensive phototherapy and frequent monitoring of bilirubinemia. Preventing and assessing neonatal hypoglycemia. So babies of uh, women with diabetes should have blood glucose tested um, and should have uh, and, and, and the babies should be fed as soon as possible after birth, ideally within 30 minutes. And then at frequent intervals at two to, uh, you know, every two to three hours until feeding maintains their pre feed capillary glu uh, blood glucose um, level at a minimum of two millimoles per litre. Only, only use additional measures to tube feeding or intravenous dextrose if capillary blood glucose levels are below 2 on two consecutive readings despite maximal support feeding or if there are abnormal clinical signs or the baby will not um, effectively feed orally. Um, for babies with clinical signs of hypoglycemia, test blood glucose levels and provide intravenous dextrose as soon as possible. So quite important slide again, because these, these values um, are, are important. And as said, they were something that uh, are quite routinely um, tested in the exam. So very, very important to know all these figures um, quite, you know, and, and just and just memorize them. Um, so you have no trouble in answering these questions in the exam, because questions like that, that have got numbers in it, you either know it or you don't in the exam. There's no there's no guessing guesswork around it. So if 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 you know you have been pointed out that this is an important slide, then the best thing to do is just to memorize it so that at least you've got it in your head as it is, so you're not um, having to second guess yourself in the exam. And that means you can tick that question off quick, you know, very quickly and move on to the next one. So postnatal care for uh, women with diabetes, so gestational diabetes should stop there. Um, any therapy that they're taking orally, insulin or whatever, as soon as baby's born, um, offer lifestyle advice like weight control, diet and exercise, offer a plasma, fasting plasma glucose test at 16 to 13 weeks after the birth to exclude diabetes. Um, 
This is usually done at um, six weeks for practical reasons of referral um, into the NHS Diabetes Prevention Programme if they are eligible. The, past, if the fasting plasma glucose test, the postnatal test, is below 6 or the HbA1c is below 39, um, then they have a low probability of having diabetes at the moment. They should be given lifestyle advice. Um, annual tests should be done to check um, their blood glucose levels um, and they have a moderate risk of developing di type 2 diabetes. If the fasting plasma glucose level is between 6 and 6.9 or HbA1c um, is between 39 and 47 and they have a high risk of developing type 2 diabetes they should be offered advice uh, and guidance uh, and interventions as recommended by nice guidance and uh, nice guidelines on preventing type 2 diabetes um, if they have fasting plasma glucose levels of 7 or above then they're likely um, to have type 2 diabetes and offer them a test to confirm this if the HbA1c level is 48 or above, again, they have type 2 diabetes and refer them for further care. Um, annual HbA1c should be done with, um, to, should be offered to uh, all women who, ha who had gestational diabetes um, so they can uh, and have had a negative postnatal test for diabetes. Well, that's it. So that's in approximately 15 minutes. I have covered the entire guideline for the diabetes and pregnancy. As I said, it's quite a boring guideline to read yourself, but when you have it, when you have to listen it to it, you know, to from somebody, it's not uh, hopefully that difficult. I hope this has been useful for you. And if you did find this um, guideline useful, then do please um, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And also leave a comment um, if you find it if you found this useful. And also, if there's any um, recommendations as to uh, if there's any other videos that you would like to watch, um, good luck revising.